A lot of Tri-City sports fans will remember Adele Harris. Ten years ago, she was the head women's basketball coach at Tusculum. Went from there, Division II, to North Carolina Wilmington. And now is the chief of staff uh, for Jerry Stackhouse with the Vanderbilt Commodores. You know that I do think that the Vanderbilt University athletic program is very forward-thinking with the hire of Malcolm Turner to be their athletic director, and for that matter, playing for a national championship in baseball. And yes, I do think hiring Adele Harris as chief of staff for Jerry Stackhouse's basketball team is a step in that forward-thinking direction. But she has a very optimistic book. It is called Refuse to Lose, and let me see if I get this right. These are the seven ways that you can overcome adversity in your life. Adele Harris, this is the third book, I believe, that you have written. How did you become an author as you were a coach? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on, uh, on your show. And uh, very grateful for the opportunity. And happy to be back in the great state of <laughs> Imagine that you don't become great without overcoming adversity. I mean, that's something that's always uh, been said. Uh, and so let's see, what are the seven, seven steps to make adversity your advantage? Well, I talk about, um, one, I share portions of my personal journey. Uh, just to give the reader uh, some, uh, some insight into the book, I talk about the And by accepting it, it just means to fully embrace it and take it on as yours. 
words. It doesn't matter why it happened. It uh, doesn't matter that it happened. could have been something that's there out of your control. Uh, but it's yours now, so embrace it fully. And when we can embrace it fully, now we can go about the business of changing uh, and, and creating a new narrative and creating a plan and a system to move forward. And so embracing your journey and loving all of it, regardless of how ugly it looks, is very significant in making it versus your advantage. And, uh, and then the third step is rewriting the story. So this is where you make a decision. Um, you know, I make a decision. I want to be successful. I make a decision that I'm going to coach basketball. I'm going to coach it at the highest level. I want to be a championship coach. I want to win championships. Whatever, whatever that vision is, you decide to make a decision that this is going to be your new journey. This is the mission and assignment you're on. I think that's very key. A lot of people... <clears throat> don't get to where they want to go because they never really decide where they want to go. And um, you know, I, I, I understand that very much. Yes, I, I, I hear exactly what you're saying on that. I, I know some people are just log around and they don't have a goal or they don't have a direction. But yes, please continue, Adele Harris. Anyway. Yeah, I think, um, I think it sounds very simple. You would think that most people have made a decision with what they're going to do with their life, but most people also haven't. Um, even college athletes, even college coaches, even high, I mean, it doesn't matter who you are or what profession you're in. Um, there has to come a time where you decide, I'm going to be the best at this, the best mother, the best daughter, um, the best coach, whatever it is, and then determine what that looks like, and then uh, create the world, like invent the world and work backwards. You know, I call it reverse engineering, where I go to the finish line and then I work backwards. So I've already been to my deathbed and I work backwards in my life. So where do I want, what do I want to have accomplished when I'm lying on my deathbed? How many lives did I want to have impacted or touched through the sport of basketball or through writing books or through public speaking? Um, <clears throat> I've worked backwards to the home I want to live in and the people I want around me. And what type of citizen I want to be in our community. Whatever it is, we all have our story. I think it's important to work backwards from our deathbed and what story we want to leave and the legacy we want to leave as opposed to working from our birthbed, which we oftentimes do, is to just keep repeating the same story over and over again, you know, single parent home or grew up in poverty or I never got an opportunity because of the color of my skin or because of my mm -hmm. gender or this is always going to be that way because that's just how it is. And um, changing that narrative is our responsibility, and I call that kind of owning our own outcome and becoming the hero of our story. And then step four and step five are both steps where it's just daily implementation of the right ideas and the right information. So uh, step four is modeling the behaviors of others, which I've done a lot in my career. I, we do it in every career. You know, in your job, I'm sure you have people that you model, that left a blueprint, yes. idolize, that you look up to, and they've helped shape them person you are. They help shape the professional you are, how you do your job. A lot of times our parents are the first models for us, but what if you don't have parents that were great models? Well, you got to reinvent that story for yourself, and you got to find new models that, that mimic exactly what you want to become. And so um, modeling the behaviors, the right behaviors, gives you new ideas and new information and new ways of thinking uh, that, you, that you didn't have uh, prior to that. And then Step five is uh, daily empathy and gratitude. I'm just I'm very, very, very passionate about being grateful for every single opportunity I've ever had. I've, I've seen it show up in my professional life when I was a, um, a first-time assistant coach at UNC Asheville. Mm -hmm. you know, we didn't have a whole lot of resources, and it was low Division One, and it was a really, really uh, unsuccessful program when I got the job, but I'm so grateful to have a job that work really wasn't work for me. Coaching basketball had never been work, and I got to do it every day. And even though it paid me eighteen thousand dollars a year, I was I was happy I got a chance to do something, and they paid my bills, um, and I was doing it independently. I was grateful for every moment I got to coach basketball in Asheville. And the same thing when I got to Tuscaloosa College. Um, I always thought very highly of the opportunity I got. Frankie DeBus gave me a chance mm -hmm. to run my first program. As a Division II head coach, I inherited a very talented group of kids there, and every moment there helped create the person that I am now. But I know I walked into the office every day with a sense of gratitude. And it's not as common as some people think. And I think because I can look at life through the lens of gratitude, I can attract more things to be grateful for. 
And uh, so I think it's an energy that we can create in our world. Uh, sometimes we don't we take it for granted how powerful being grateful is and um, attracting that back to our life. But it's very important. And then that empathy factor allows me to see myself and every person I meet. Um, I may not have had your same story. Uh, and this is very important in coaching. I may not know exactly where you came from or what it's like to be you, but I can feel you because we are sharing the same human experience. Uh, we're both connected through in more ways than we are not connected. And um, that's just seeing ourselves in other people and being empathetic to other people's story and their journey. Then you lose judgment. I don't judge anybody. I don't expect anything from anybody. I love you because you are who you are. And whatever you have to give me, I trust that that's your best. And so... That's a very important um, way to look at the world, and I think it creates a very uh, a more positive, happy human being. And um, so those are steps that you can practice and work on every single day to create the right mindset uh, so you can rewrite your story in the way you want to live. And then um, step six is, is stating your cause. Uh, that's making a decision about what am I going to do, doing something that sets your soul on fire your contribution to the greater good, what are you going to leave behind when you no longer exist. I think the thing that gives you goosebumps is what I is what I always define it as. You know, when, when Coach Stackhouse called me about the opportunity to join his vision for Vanderbilt men's basketball and what that could be, and, you know, if his vision actually, if he gets his vision across the finish line, uh, what that could mean for everyone in Nashville, what our program, uh, Coach Stackhouse himself, but myself, that gives me goosebumps. I trust my goosebumps, and I think more of us need to do things that give us goosebumps. And so state your cause is, is the message to yourself, like what are you here to do? And um, define that significance for yourself and, and trust your goosebumps. And then the last part is once you get there, share it with the world. Share your adversity with the world. Sharing is a part of healing. And um, the more times I communicate my truth to other people, uh, the more empowered I am to stand and accept, which is step two. Can I, can I, I got to interrupt you because I got 10 seconds. Can I keep you through this commercial break here and we'll talk a little bit more about this and some of your coaching career too, Adele Harris? Oh, absolutely. Let's absolutely. do that. Okay, we'll go back 15 more minutes with Adele Harris. <laughs> 